So, I went to Junction 2 on Friday. It didn't go on Saturday. Um, I ended up in a really advantageous situation. We ended up buying two tickets. No, I, we ended up buying, I ended up buying weekend tickets for me and my friend uh, to make up for the fact that um, he purchased the Drake tickets for us to go see him in the O2 during that concert. But then last minute, he was like, you know what? Actually, just give me the money and I won't go to um, Junction because he had a bit of an injury. Then Junction rolls around. He changes his mind. Then I'm like, you know what? I just want to go on Friday anyway. I don't really want to go for the whole weekend. So I end up selling my weekend ticket, buying a day ticket. He also buys a day ticket. And I bought a day ticket, I think, for... I'm going to say in total, including booking fee, like 38 quid or 37 pounds. Like insanely good value for money. There are some available still on the official ticket partners for like 60 quid, which is still good value for money. But I end up buying mine on TicketSwap. I recommend you check that out, ticketswap.co.uk. You can log in through Facebook or in your email address. And essentially, uh, people resell tickets on there. A really solid way to do it. I think on the seller side, you have to upload your ticket PDF onto the site. It gets authenticated by their team. And then as soon as the person purchases your... You, then you list it for the price that you want to list it for. And as soon as the person purchases your ticket, they, they, they get sent the PDF straight to their account. The money gets put into your PayPal, I'm assuming. So it's instant. You have to wait for anyone to get back to you. You know, sometimes when you buy tickets on... Um, oh, it's not... Why is not Focus for... Focus there. You know, sometimes when you buy tickets on um on Facebook, you have to wait for the person to reply back because it can be a bit annoying. Um, you don't know if they're going to send you a dud, blah, 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 blah. So um, I did that. Absolutely amazing time to be alive. Fucking loved it. Um, I was like really looking forward to going to see all those DJs play. Um, specifically, this is the this is the festival program here. I've got here holding up, if you can see it on the screen. It's a little, little zine kind of catalog thing, which is pretty cool. Um, so 7th of uh, June and Saturday as well. Um, so Boston Manor. Getting to Boston Manor was an absolute ball lake though. That's the only thing. I think I looked at it previously online, City Mapper wise, and it looked like an hour 20. It probably took a bit longer for us to get there by the time we met up and got the train, blah, blah, blah. It took about an hour and 20, an hour 30 maybe, or an hour 40 maybe to get to the actual uh, site. You come out of Boston Manor. I think we got the train to Waterloo. Was it Waterloo? No, the, the central line to Holborn, and then we took the district line all the way to Boston Manor, essentially, and then got from there, and there was loads of us coming off this train, like, you know, as you do when you go to not in the, not in Hill Festival and stuff, just loads of people coming off. Um, a really good idea that they did the pre-2 p.m. tickets, though. Uh, it ended at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock. I'm not sure what time it ended. Was it 10 or 11? Uh, I think 10. Was it 10 or 11? I'm not too sure. I think 10. I'm not too sure. But anyway, they did a good idea about doing the pre 2 p.m. tickets because what happened was that there was a lot of people because I was worried when we were going in and it would be the only people there before 2, before 2 p.m. But there was tons of people that bought those same tickets as us. So there was a wave of people coming in pre 2 p.m. There was a pre 4 p.m. crew and then there was a the people that was coming in after who went to see kind of the main kind of headline acts playing from like 5 to like 10 p.m. So it worked out perfectly, like literally perfectly. Really, really good occasion. Um, it was a good time, man. It was a fucking good time. Really, really good time. Um, it took ages to get there, uh, which isn't you know, which is annoying. But if you've been to Heathrow, um, from East London, you know that journey is a bit of a ball lake. But you know, it gets you there in general quite easily enough. Anyway, we got to the station. That worked out pretty well. Everyone walked up, and as you come out of the station, there was loads of uh, marshals and uh, kind of like a, what would you call them? Ticket help people by the side of the road, like telling people where to go, where to walk down. Blah blah. Essentially, essentially, just walk down the side of the road where the barriers were. Then we get to the park, and you had like one screening at the front where security guards were standing out and kind of like checking your tickets to get into the actual gate, so they won't let you in the gate first of all without a ticket, which is good because it stopped kind of like stragglers kind of like hanging around and milling around where the gates were. And then it got a bit. Then it got a bit of a tricky. It got a bit of a, an issue there. It's the only issue I have with the actual festival. We got through the first gates where the, t the security guards take your ticket. Then as you get to the second kind of gate thing. There's another security guard who checks your tickets again. You have to dump all your drinks. And then there's another gate as you get into the park where it kind of splits off into all the little barriers and you have to go to the actual people that have the scanners that check your um, QR code on your on your ticket. So as we got there, me and my friend were just like laughing and we're going, wow, we're here. I can't believe it. it's amazing. I'm so excited. I was maybe, I don't know, one beer in. I had like a beer in my pouch that i forgot that i drank really quickly as we caught in the cronenberg that was super warm so i wasn't even drunk or tipsy or anything i was just i was fairly sober my friend was fairly sober too we walked up to the gate and then some security guy ran and told us oh no don't go through here you have to you you, you guys go to the end one go to the end, go to the end one. Like, okay cool where's the end one but we went to the wrong one when we went to the second to the end one we went to the top we got a ticket scan he followed us again and said no you have to go to the end line okay cool 
So we go to the end uh, barrier, walk right to the end, and then once we get to the top of the of the entrance, we pass all the people that are getting their tickets to go into the thing, and we're suddenly in this tent, right, with security, and they're searching us like every, and they're searching people in front of us, you know, every inch of their body for any sort of like illegal drugs or whatever it may be, or illegal, you know, items, I don't know, whatever you were trying to bring in. And that kind of like really put a bit of a bummer on the, on the occasion, right? We came into with so much enthusiasm, so much hype. We were so excited to go in, to go see how every DJ has played. There was such a good vibe in the whole in the whole walk up towards the, the park. We met, bumped into some random guys. We were like, you know, we were changing bands with and talking about boiler room sets we saw previously and the mixes we learned, listened to online to get us pumped for the night. And then suddenly now we're in a tent. Uh, with security and a police officer, it looked like, but it looks like on the table, really searching us up and down to make sure we hadn't had, did have any drugs on us. It's just like, oh my god. So we're in this thing, and it kind of just, it just kind of gets you out of the zone, right? It kind of kicks you out of the zone. It kind of makes you just think, oh, man, this issue I have with um partying and going out in London, you have your state gets so messed up all the time, right? You get messed like uh, your state of mind gets messed with before you were in the dance and by the time you're actually in the rave it's like you know you're having to kind of work yourself back up again like you're ramping yourself going to this event and then you're having to encounter so many people who don't give any fucks about the event right the security they don't care right they're just there working so they're enforcing their rules to the sh- to the letter of the law they're trying to bust people they're trying to you know their game is to get people arrested or to get people nicked to get people chucked out that's where their game is because they don't care about the event they just want to catch people who are doing wrong which is fair that's their job and then us on our side of it, as festival goes, we just want to have a good time. We just have a party. So there's this weird, like, you know, clash of personalities happening in the space. And I saw it all over the festival, actually, throughout the thing. A- apart from the music that was good, that was kind of a common theme. So we're in a tent waiting, and the people ahead of us are kind of picking up a bit of a fuss. They're like, we don't have anything. They're arguing. The girls are arguing. And then they essentially have us waiting by this table. And a woman or a guy is leading us into the next kind of side of the tent where there's a police officer who's got a bit of a form there. He's writing down our name on a sheet. He's taking our passport ID, writing it down. They're searching us thoroughly, making sure we don't have anything illegal, saying to us, sorry, but we have to search you. It's a random search. And it's like, that's not a random search. I, I, I'm going to say that there was the same kind of person in that tent every time I was in there. I don't want to say what, but, you know, there were a number of young black guys are in that tent, a number of them, Right. There was a, maybe one a handful of white guys in there, but for for the most part, most black guys that were in there were trying to go to that festival on their own or with a couple of mates were all getting all getting shepherded to that tent. All of them, which is really frustrating, right? Really, really frustrating. And I get it. They have to stamp out some drug dealing. They have to stru- stamp out some illegal activities. They might have a particular character, or a particular persona or person that comes to that festival every single year that does the same sort of thing. I get it, but... I don't know. I don't think me and my friend looked that dodgy. I don't think I looked that dodgy. And it's just a bit upsetting to have that happen. To have yourself grouped in with people like this. To have people alongside you who were completely innocent also grouped in like that. It just made a really damn point on the whole kind of like start of the night. Luckily, it was only the beginning, right? It was only like, what, 1 p.m. or half one. So I didn't. I wasn't uh, too worried about it. Then I got to the side with the police officer. He searched me. The security guard, no, the police officer took down my passport details. The security guard searched me quite thoroughly. Literally had the palm of his hand inside the upper echelons of my uh, in my groin, maybe touching my nutsack. And then by the time it was over, I was ready to go out and just party. So we went out of the festival tent. I was just happy to see my friend on the other side of the thing. I was thinking, you know, I don't know, like what they would go, what they were looking for. But uh, luckily, we got in. And then from there, the festival was fairly plain sailing they operated with a token system which i was not familiar with you had to go up to the stand and get these little paper tokens that you exchange for drinks essentially works the same way as cash you know it's 550 for a beer six pound for a a cider uh which you know each token was like a pound essentially and uh, and you could split them into halves and to quarters and then i think a mixer no i think a spirit without any mixer was like a tenner and you know just the standard kind of festival prices with some kind of and a great section of food uh, stalls as well near the main stage so the site was really cool like amazing boston Manor park like kind of sites like kind of a little bit in the forest with a massive park there with uh and then the main kind of um pest and resistance was a bit under the bridge that everyone was kind of going to and that was one of my favorite venues it was like it look literally located underneath a bridge a motorway bridge um you had the entire kind of festival floor um the length of the bridge and then right at the end of it was where the dj booth was and it towards the middle bit of it that's where the bars were and just behind and just and just in front of that was, was these screens on either side so what ended up happening was that when it was empty you just saw the screens playing the you know it's live with the dj on the stage but then when it was full 
you got to just stand there and see the DJ play. You could see all the intricacies, zooming in, all that stuff, some shots of the crowd, that really well done production wise. And you know what was also really good about it? The sound. The sound was banging. It was so loud. It was so loud. I was so happy. One of my pre- one of my uh one of my trepidations about going was that I was like, oh man, look, look, usually London Heath festivals are so hit and miss with sound because sometimes they're hosted in parks and residential areas. They can't put the limiter up. They have a lot of real strict laws in terms of sound pollution and stuff, noise pollution in London, if you know anything about that and how much of a battle we've had with local councils, just like nightlife people in general, not me personally, but people that go out and organize these events. So I was like, oh man, and usually festival pros are a little bit scummy. They won't tell you these things beforehand or just take your money and put on the kind of a dead show as you saw with all points east and a few others happened over the last few weeks but luckily the sound for junction two was divine really really good man on all the stages the main stage the bit in the woods the other couple of stages as well i saw like really great sound i was honestly super super impressed um and in general just a really well organized festival the only again the only thing that i'd say was a bit of a misnomer was the security they had security that were like ap- actually out to like arrest people get people chucked out and they were like walking around in bands of five or six just like you know to pervert uh per, what do you call it uh survey the area making sure no one's doing anything illegal it just felt really scary you felt like you're always on pins and news when they're walking around they had quite a kind of mean mug look in their face and they're just like <laughs> really about they, they, you could tell they're just looking to fuck somebody up right do anything to get them on their nerves and they would have had you on that floor quicker than you could say hallelujah right they were really looking to get into a scrap so luckily that didn't happen for, for either of us or for any for anyone i was um, in contact with uh i did see a couple people get like dragged out of the dance uh at, at dragged out dragged out of the crowd i saw one dude unfortunately who happened to be just like passing around business cards i think he was an artist or an entertainer or something or the like and they must have thought he was dealing they literally dragged him by the scruff of his neck searched him all around searched his bag touched that like, jamie just really roughed him up and then they realized he literally had a stack of lemonade business cards he was handing out to people it's like oh you guys man relax relax so yeah that was a bit annoying but overall good good night uh really enjoyed it great organization it took a while to get back home too um i wasn't maybe in the best of uh sober moods to get home either and my head was still spinning by the time i got back home so if anyone saw me on the train looking like i was spaced out of my mind i was <laughs> please excuse but yeah a stellar stellar night some standout performances. I'm going to go through the program notes here and kind of go... Actually, let me go on Instagram and see what people are posting because I wasn't posting anything on social because I'm an actual good person and I don't do those kind of things. I just kind of go there to have a good night and stuff. But let me go in here and see what people are posting. Instagram, but quickly I'll say, um, who did we see? Uh, did we see a bit of Bicep? No, we didn't see Bicep. We saw Mr. G performing as we got in amazing on the main stage. That was a really good performance. It was really awesome because there was hardly anyone there. It was quite empty. So to see an expert DJ at that level suddenly get people to come from like walking past and try to come in the main dance was amazing. You had people dancing in there on the stage. Oh, they had stages on the main stage too. That were fucking cool. So it's like a big circle and then they had these massive platforms on the outside that you could dance and stand on that were amazing. That probably made for good photo opportunities later on if people take pictures of them. Uh, we saw, we had a bit of photo removal. No, we didn't hear photo removal. We had Mr. G. We had a bit of Giles Peterson. Then we saw Dixon, DJ Coz. And unfortunately we didn't see ricardo Vera lobos and um craig richards ricardo Vera lobos was ill unfortunately beforehand i didn't know that we were, i was still looking out to see his flipping you know fiat chick arms in the background but i didn't see that craig richards smashed it anywhere by himself dixon though was probably the standout performer of the night dixon wow to dixon wow 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 i'm gonna get actually a video up here now to show you guys because that was maybe my the best performance I've seen ever of a DJ. Um, again, you're probably able to see me somewhere in the corner of this performance. I've got it here on Instagram. I'll search it below here. Is this one of them? Yeah, this is it. So this is this is one 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 video. Supposed to be he's playing a uh, QB color, no dancers, Adam Port remix. Look at the great lighting, the great stage design, just an amazing production. Considering this was completely empty a couple of days ago, right? And they were just putting it up like a week ago or something is insane. So that was Dixon there. There's another video of Dixon 2 playing where I think I might see me in a corner somewhere. If you're watching this via YouTube, you'll probably see it. So this is the main stage. Dixon just smashing it, right? <laughs> that was one of my favorite Okay, I think that was the last track. And I was somewhere in the, on the left-hand side of the stage. Right there, my knee on top somewhere. I think you can see me somewhere there. So good, man. Pick up everyone else around, man. That was awesome. So 
so good, man. So good. Dixon playing there. Let's go on again. Another Dixon video too. I think you can see me somewhere in the corner here. Maybe. I'm in a corner right then left hand side. With it wearing a neon green top. A cassette player neon green top. Oh. It was easily. Again. To see Dixon play at that kind of level was amazing. The ability to rock. He played for two hours. And the kind of ups and downs. The peaks and valleys. Taking left and right was insane. I think a couple of people are going to see him at Houghton's. Which I'm fucking jealous about. Houghton's looks amazing. Actually you can see me there. Actually in the green. There's me right there. Can you see me on the screen? I'm right there. There's that, that black guy there wearing a neon green top. Let's zoom out a little bit. <laughs> it's amazing. So fun. Oh, so fun. It was so good. But yeah, I really enjoyed it, man. He's, a, he's an amazing DJ, of course, which does need to be said. Um, but yeah, what an amazing performance. Look at that. Just... Stellar stuff, man. To see this guy play like that, that long was amazing. Actually, um, up we um is gonna play here as well in London at Phonox. Hopefully, in a couple of weeks. I think a few weeks. Sorry, in, in on a Sunday, I'm thinking about going to that. So that might be a good occasion for you guys that are um, as much as bigger in a fan, in a vision fans as I am. But yeah, that was an amazing performance. Just really cool to see that again. Super inspiring for myself, being an inspiring DJ or an aspiring DJ and trying to do what I'm doing on my side of things, just to see that kind of level of perfection, crowd control, um, song selection, mixing ability. It was just insane, insane. And again, just that's just that's just hours and hours of practice. And considering that he really is picky on the festivals that he plays at, if you've read any interviews, listen to him speak, you know how finicky he is about where he plays at and who he's playing for and the production level and stuff. The, the fact that he's had so much faith in Junction 2 and he comes back again and again and again to play for them really shows... Really he says speaks a lot about his kind of um influence on the scene overall um again loads of really cool pictures from people that posted again i didn't take any of myself to, to um apologies for those guys looking for a kind of vlog and stuff i was attempted to do it but again i'm really a big believer in going to these events and really kind of cutting yourself off from social media and from technology in general i was kind of relying on my friend to do that he was kind of doing all these pictures and uploading them on social himself but i was really about trying to be there and really embrace and experience the event without having to be on social and be online again because there's no way i can uh you can really illustrate how fun the event was anyway through social so it's a bit of a waste of time and yeah i just had a really good time man and i think other people again were in the place of doing that for us isn't it yeah until next year i think i'm gonna be there again next year easily easily we're going to go again next year really well again really amazing done performance um the production really big up to everyone involved in the lwe team for putting that together and everyone else attached to it fabric and all those guys relentless um for giving out some free energy drinks at the end which was very very welcomed oh motor city drum ensemble was insane yeah he smashed it too we saw him for about half an hour that was really cool just an amazing experience overall again i really 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 impressive to go look at this Festival DJing is like no other. Right? We just have to come with the bangers. Yeah, just an amazing experience, man. Was this at night? What happened here? Oh, tell of us. Wow. Help point. Festival line. That's pretty cool. <laughs> but yeah, really amazing festival. I really recommend you check it out. Match your playing as well at the main stage. We've kind of regretted not seeing people play on Saturday. But again, I think... Um, I went too hard on the Friday and I wasn't really in the in the right mental state or physical state to go on the on the Saturday. So I kind of, you know, regret going so hard on that day. But again, I had it in my mindset I was going on a Monday, so I couldn't go the whole weekend. But I think next year, this is definitely one of my festivals I was going down to. I think Houghton and Junction are easily maybe two of the best kind of UK festivals, it seems like, because everyone I was speaking to at the at Junction was saying they were going to Houghton. There was a direct correlation with the same sort of scene. Great people great range of ages. I saw a lot of older folk there as well who were coming out to rave, kind of following some of the more mature DJs who have been on the circuit for a while. And just generally a good vibe, man. Really, really good vibe. No wankers, no nothing. Like I said before, the only bad thing about the festival were the overzealous security guards. But again, I understand that kind of place is probably rife for, it's probably rife for the kind of wrong people coming on. Oh, it's either Eggberg playing as well. It probably is a bit rife for all those kind of wrong ones to be there. So I guess you kind of have to not take any chances. But, um, Great place, man. They were doing the they were doing this, the glitter thing as well. Stands with people 
applying glitter. You know how white girls love glitter and stuff, so that was funny to see. <laughs> but yeah, just in general, an amazingly well put together uh, festival. Um, again, credit to all of the people involved in in um, putting Junction together. As you can see, lots of people having such a great time and just enjoying life. And again, straight great value for money. If you paid, if you paid the entire the entire 120 pounds or 160 pounds to go see people play the whole time you were there you would have been well within your right to and it's well worth your money um there's no way you're gonna say you're gonna waste any money going there to, to be honest seeing the amount of things you're gonna see the auction levels the, the distance it is to london in general it's not again i complain but again it's not super super far it's a bit far it's a bit out there the sound pollution isn't as bad as it was in other places just a great thing what was his master person tell of us Yeah, just a great festival, man. They smashed it. They absolutely smashed it. Everyone, everyone did a good job. Congratulations to all those involved. Uh, that's it, man. But yeah, I got, I got a bit of foam already. Kind of not being there. It's kind of busted. Kind of you know, post uh, festival blues, man. Damn it.